Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you are doing good. Today we are going to discuss one of the main topic in DX API. Let's see what is the request and response that we need to send, what is the URL and what are the authentication types that are available in API. Let's get started into the topic. So we have known that Pega is a server and it is a service which hosts this uh, particular DX API and it can be communicated from some other front-end application using REST calls. That means our Pega server is acting as a service host. Okay. So before getting into that, how we can access Pega APIs, I have shown from Dev Studio. From App Studio also, we can uh, access those APIs and from Admin Studio also, we can access. So this is App Studio. Once you switch to App Studio, under Channels, you can see Pega API. So here you can select the respective version of the service package. Okay, and uh, you can use the respective REST call. And uh, for example, this is a case step ID, this is assignment ID. Suppose this is get assignments. If you see this, you can see we can get the assignments on a respective case. So for that, uh, you can see that uh, for this particular case ID, now, if there are a list of assignments, you can see over here. So you can see sample syntax also here. So how we can access from admin studio, switch to admin studio. Under resources, you can see APIs. In this way also, you can uh, view the Pega APIs. And here you can uh, select the service package as that I have told previously and the pre there are some prerequisites that we should be knowing about DX API before we are going to use this uh, okay we should be having some specific access role to our access group called as Pega rules Pega API this is one of the important class that is very required so if you go to your operator You can see you have some access groups, right? Once you go to your access group, you can add this particular access role, Pega rules, Pega API DX. So if you open this access role, this is given by Pega itself. This refers to Pega API class and it is having read, write, delete instances and read, write, delete rules as five. And these are the respective privileges that are available okay you can see what is the use of these privileges also we know that uh, we would be uh, creating some methods like post put uh, get assignment key or like that so which is nothing but it is in turn calling some activities right so this px create case dx is one of the privilege that is required suppose if you want uh, some users to be given uh, a feasibility to create uh, cases through DX API, then they should be having this privilege. So you can play around with these uh, access rules and privileges and you can restrict your application so that only few users can view the assignments and only few users can uh, create cases and all. So this is very important access uh, role. And if you search here, Pega API, Pega rules API, this also uh, useful uh, access role you can add to your uh, operator if you are uh, admin or something but for DX API that is the major thing and uh, next is MVC architecture so we know that model view controller is a MVC architecture that we follow in any of the software development tool so here in this DX API context view and controller is client so suppose there is an user and they have react components already built so they have runtime orchestrator as well they would be controlling by getting the data from our server so as we as a pega developing server we would be giving application ui cases data configuration and everything so we act as model and user like a react component our websites they act as 
v1 controller our dx api and data apis lies in between and what is the processing mode of this api so before getting into this let's see where this particular service api is present so under records if you go to integration resources and you can see service package here you can see service package name as api so here you have to select stateless uh, processing mode so what is stateless processing mode stateless is nothing but we don't maintain any sessions after request is processed due to this we can't maintain name pages between two different dx api requests so this uh, process mode and if you have a service access group see prpc administrator service access group and see here requires authentication to make our application more secure from dx api calls you have to select what is the authentication type you want generally for our video purposes i am not using any authentication purposes that's why i'm deselecting it but basically it is supporting three authentication type basic OAuth 2 and custom you can select whatever you want and uh, if you want to secure your connections right you can give this require tsl or ssl for rest services in the package and uh, if you scroll down you can see different methods so this is v1 method and if you scroll a bit down you can see all the methods that are available in pega related to this particular service package api pooling open api and this context okay now we know that this is a service package and if you want to use respective authentication type you can modify here so how to trace a respective rest call we know that this is a service package so if you go to integration services we are the service rest so we are opening that and you can filter here we know that service package name is api and you can see many versions over here suppose you are using traditional dx api but not constellation then your particular version will be v1 you can see all the calls over here suppose you are using constellation you can go for v2 these are two new editions okay now i'm going for v1 suppose i'm gay i want to trace a particular call where we would be giving a request uh, to create a cases and that particular response will be tackled over here so how we know that this is the respect to thing is we know that uh, in our service package we have all the service calls suppose example this is cases here v1 cases open this particular service rest see and if you go to history it will see like pega cases api restful service this is and here you can see this is the service endpoint url so whenever you want to create a new cases right you have to use this v1 cases and this is your service endpoint url so this you can hit from your postman and if you scroll down you can see already the execution mode is defined as synchronous process and if you scroll a bit you can see methods so as i said uh, we would be having some privileges to create a cases and all right so what is the logic behind this uh, creation of cases or getting the list of the cases because we have seen like in our uh, pega apis there are different calls like suppose this is case types under case type this is case types case type id and this one and uh, suppose you want to create a new case right see this is the new cases post this means what create a new case so if you go back here for post method we would be using pz create case this is the otb activity that would be called when you uh, do a postman call with a post this is get it would be using pz get cases activity this is also otb activity and you can't modify this because these are final and this is put this is update case so when you want to update some case uh, you can use this uh, api call and it indeed calls this pz update case so now we have showed like how uh, this is acting behind suppose if you want to trace this particular call 
just you go to this respect to service rest but not service package from service package also you can uh, traverse through this suppose if i open cases here it indeed opens the service rest only just if you go to actions click trace here you can see it was uh, tracing this sub rule service rest api so when you hit something suppose i have a postman here i am trying to create a case okay i have given class name case type id and i'm just clicking send and if you go back to tracer you can see it has been traced you can see what has happened here and all when uh, it has invoked this create uh, case okay for example now i have created this postman this postman configuration as well i will be explaining you so once you have installed uh, postman right click plus icon and here you can select what is the method you are going to do so i am trying to create this particular post call for example i am going back here i am just giving post this url i already told from our rest service here this is the endpoint url this url i am copying over here after copying it you can see here authorization suppose uh, if you want to give over 2.0 or basic authorization you have to give the same here make sure that this operator would be having the privilege that i have already shared in the starting of this video and these are the headers and this is the body okay so for this respect to case type okay you can see from our pega api like uh, this would be our request and response i'm going back here and scrolling down to cases uh, sorry i'm going for post call it so under cases if you scroll down you can see case type id i can give the class name suppose you are going to create a particular case type for a respective class so in my example i am going to have this is a case type okay for this particular class i want to create a cases so i am giving this class id and this is process id is nothing but uh, the starting flow of the case so there is no intention to give this you can just remove this and you give this case type id and you click send you can see here and you can see there will be like next assignment id where you will be getting the assignment key as well as routing logic is not configured in my local system it did not return that but you can see that c7015 case has been created okay and what is the other prerequisite is debugging that so for debugging this respect to request and response you should be having a uh, system setting called as debug api so if i'm giving this debug api as true and saving it then for every call in our logger this particular pega api rest calls will be logged so it is very useful for us to investigate the issues so every time if you keep this true and uh, there are some endpoint application that uses many times then it would be a problem for us because our logs will be piled up so only when you want to trace some issues you make sure to use this dynamic system settings and uh, you can try uh, doing that and there is another way also to check the request suppose this is the class name so you can see c7015 it has been created now just if you open this aspect to case and if you go to clipboard okay uh, under pa work page px flow this is a new work that is the flow that is removed while creating this you can see here py flow parameters if you go to py flow parameters you can see the request that uh, has been passed from our postman that uh, this is the request and this is a request page where the values are populated over here and this is a py create and this is a uid what is the rule type rule ui view and uh, flow type you can see flow name and flow type here this is a context pv service page dot create case request dot content in this way you can uh, do tracing of your service package or start debugging on this 
hope you have learned a new concept on this particular dxap these this is also a theoretical video in next video i would be explaining uh, with a sample example so now we have seen creating of a case right in next video we can see more like how we can get the assignment information what are the actions that are present on the assignment and uh, other stuff thanks for watching this video hope you understood this concept please share comment on this video if you like it and please subscribe to my channel as it is free of cost and you can listen more videos from me